Praise God, I pass the call in to coordinate the questions and answers. All right, Pastor, you want to get a drink? Yes, I am. Thank you very much. All yes. right, so uh, for questions and answers, if you have any questions, you can post it in the chat now or you can unmute yourself to ask the question. Does not did he have a dog one day they laugh? <laughs> It'd be funny one day some people find in their house a group of mice all laughing. <laughs> Any question? Um, if there's echo coming, I will refresh it for the. Okay. What is the thought should be R? What are the thoughts before the thoughts of pride? What causes someone to allow pride to enter? It has to be in the Taipaya uh, Frosune area, which um, if you look at the Taipaya Frosune area, you can hear some disturbances. Uh, yeah, the static, the static has uh, come. Yeah. Okay. Can I refresh this? At least I got just one question to answer. Let me refresh and reboot this. Okay, and uh, on the where where do the source of uh, thoughts of pride come from? Uh, usually, they are from the enemy, from the devil, and um, uh, that because uh, he is the like the forte of pride of pride, and um, but the effect of it is on the Taipei uh, Sunay. We have not explored, this is an introduction, we have not explored each section in detail because I got to introduce the whole thing all at once. But you find that the word Taipaio uh, Sune, from Sune, is from uh, Philippians and it's talked about lowliness of mind and it's been used in various areas uh, Acts 20, 19, Ephesians 4, 2, translated loneliness, loneliness of mind, Philippians 2, 3, Colossians 18, as uh, uh, opposite of that, is called false humility. Mentioned twice. False humility is mentioned twice. So look at Colossians 2, 18. So there's a false part of the pie of Frosune. Look at the context. It says here, verse um, 16, 17, 18, this is called false humility. So let no one judge you in food or drink regarding a festival, new moon or Sabbath, which are shadow things to come, but substance is Christ. Let no one cheat you of your reward, taking delight in false humility and worship of angels, intruding those things which have not seen when they puff up. Verse 23, these things indeed have uh, of appearance of wisdom in self-imposed religion, false humility, neglect of the body. Now, false taipaya no frosune uh, comes from the religious spirit. A religious spirit thinking that they're very clever, very wise. And one of the things I tell people, I mean, I believe our church is uh, one of the best good church and all those things, but 
We should never be proud of it. I mean, I don't want any member to go around boasting what a great church uh, uh, COGS condemn other churches. The same like when people boast of a church, actually, who is the church? Who owns the church? Jesus. We don't own it. If, it's not like you can boast a something. Now. And so it's a false sense of humility uh, when people start boasting that way. And even in a ministry, a lot of healings, you know, we bring great teaching. We can't boast because first the revelation comes from God, not from us. By ourselves, do you think we can be that clever? I don't think so. Even the end time thing and all God is the story that is so fascinating by itself. But uh, no way we can understand it by ourselves. I mean, how in the world can we know Daniel chapter 7, what the three, thorns, the three horns that fell are? No amount of studying can give you the answer. So there's so many things we cannot know by ourselves. And so, so pride comes from a false religion or someone begins to think they're higher than others or their religion is better than others, the spirituality is better than others, the church is better than others, the ministry is better than others, their own spiritual life is better than others. Uh, it's actually come from religion. Religious pride is the worst, because religious pride is what killed Jesus. The Pharisees killed him. And so that answers one. Uh, here's another question. Let me start from the top here. Okay, is God continuing to create in this realm since he first created the world as in Genesis? If not, um, uh, we perhaps as sons of God continue creation process through our thoughts, praise, intercession. All right, now before, uh, this is a question from Paul. Before God can create something very neat, he must complete what is not finished yet, which is, uh, all that God has planned out for this planet and then all that God has planned out in new heaven, new earth and then from there on something new happens and yes the answer is God does it through his sons and to new Jerusalem and to all his creation once God completes everything the creation itself can create new things out of it which is what God desires I know as uh, from the mind of Christ's perspective, how do I know the will of God in every part of my life and every happening around? Romans chapter uh, 12, verse 1 and 2 applies. It says, uh, then your body is a living sacrifice. It imply you must be surrendered 100%. And then do not conform to the world. That's the second condition. You must not have any influence of the world or world influencing you because that influence will pollute what you perceive to be the perfect will of God. And uh, then thirdly, uh, be renewed in your mind. That means you have to have a fresh new thinking. When you fulfill these three points, um, then basically it says you will discern and know God's will in your life, in every situation. And you sense it not so much as something tell you or angel proclaim, this is the perfect will of God. You sense it knowing that this is good and this is the best. And that is how we perceive and make day-to-day -day decisions. Okay. Uh, next question after that from Femi and Aima. If there is damage in one of our thought processes, what is the process of repair? Is the discovery enough to begin the healing process? What else do we need? Yes, if there's a damage in those areas, uh, firstly, you notice the branch is the life. So make sure the life comes up, the life of God. And uh, that is to spending time with God, then the life of God flows through us. And also through uh, meditation. He says there in Hebrews 4 verse 12, Remember the cutting process, the operation uh, that pierces into our bone and marrow? Uh, Hebrews 4 is the key to the healing process, which is the living word coming inside each of the drop processes, healing and doing all the repair. So the repair is in Hebrews 4, verse 12. 
next thing there uh, from Alisa, she is one thing I always ask and pray is to clear my thought forms and thought patterns of all negative energy and energy. Pastor, is this a wise thing to keep doing, keep my thoughts clear? Of course, because having the thoughts of Christ and having the mind of Christ is perfection. Think about it. The day that 100% of the thoughts of Christ we are really like Jesus in our thinking and our speech. And the next thing will be our body transformation and doing the works of Jesus. Yes, it is the key to, to Christ-likeness manifest. What is the mystery uh, of lawlessness mentioned in 2 Thessalonians 2.7? Uh, mystery of lawlessness, the reason the word mystery is applied from the Greek word uh, mysterion, it means it's hidden, but yet it's working. And so it's working in a way hidden in a way. And that's how lawlessness is also working on the planet Earth today. And if you look at the USA, for example, today, look at the, the, the atmosphere of USA today and the politics of USA today is so different from 10, 20 years ago. When, when being a president was regarded highly by everyone and highly respected, now even being a president is a joke and, and it's looked down upon. And um, when presidents debate with dignity and present their plans, gone are those days. Today's debates are not about reason anymore or policies. Today's a debate is more like children fighting. Uh, I don't like this. I don't have reason for not liking you. Uh, and, and, and today's debates contain a lot of untruth. People use things that are not true and fighting. And they know it's not true. And it's proven it's not true. They can use it. We live in a different world. And you can see that it's slowly changing. It's not overnight. But over 10 years, you can see the difference. And over the next 10 years, things are going to get worse. You see very cruel things like in a world, like uh, in US, you have one case of someone, but he still walk too slow uh, to the car and someone shoot him. And you have people, they even a few incidents, uh, a lot of the high up politicians, they are governor, governor of 50, 50, 50 odd states, Governor is in charge of the state. The governor says, shoot all the FBI agents. He wants to give the civilian the right to shoot them. Talk nonsense now. No more meaning. So he actually said that. He's, he, he says, uh, you know, shoot them. And these are not words spoken for schoolboy or people, you know, talk nonsense to a lower level. This is governmental high level. Congress level talking. How did we become come to this world? And uh, so the world will become more. And in 2027, when the two fallen angels that work in Noah's time are released, the amount of evil is even worse. And it's not. Consciously, you know, it's subconsciously. subconsciously people begin to do things that it's not, they never do before, but they do it openly and as if it's a right to do it. And so it's, it's a funny world that we're entering. But thank God, the good will become better and more glorious. And we have to preserve that. And in today's society, if you identify yourself as a Christian, it's a funny world. Some people respect you. But generally, the evil in society will mock you. You can be persecuted today for just being a good worker, but you're Christian. And they laugh at you. Why you still stick to the old religion? It's never before. Christianity used to be highly respected. But things have changed and things are getting worse. So this is a law 
mystery lawlessness working. That's why it's a mystery. It's hidden. The word mysterion means it's hidden and it's working itself invisibly. Okay, next question by Femi and Aima. Concerning the watches, the book of Enoch reference to them seem to connote that the fallen angels were watches. Were these angels performing a role of watches or the Enoch use the word watches in another connotation when referring to the fallen angels? Um, uh, yes, they were watches and um, uh, they were involved with delegated authority and power and they, he used the right word. Uh, in that. And of course, there are more than the watches that we understand. There's more things about the watches. Uh, next thing, Lisa asks, thoughts are very powerful. Yes, a thought is more powerful than a spoken word in the spiritual realm. Sometimes when I, in your mind, when I can't speak, it direct, clear the thoughts. Thoughts are creative in the spiritual realm. Yes, you are correct. Thoughts are energetic. Now, let me try to recommend a book. I forgot the author. But uh, uh, this one is Prayer, The Greatest Force on Earth. That's the title of the book. Prayer, The Greatest Force on Earth. And uh, in that book, uh, it talked about thought energy. Very few people talk on thought energy. And this person even uh, tested it out. And, and he projected the thought, Jesus, 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 uh, on a train. And he found that it, uh, it affected people for good. And the person was easier to witness to. Uh, so it was prayer, the greatest force on earth. Let me see the author. I forgot the author. Um, because there are several books with the same title, but not necessarily. No, it's not the one by Shepard. Uh, it's a very, very old book. Pastor, I think the other time we talk about it is, uh, is it the, the guy Frank, is it? Ah, Frank Lobach. Yeah. Uh, Frank uh, Lobach. Let me see. Frank. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce his French name. B-A-C-H. B-A-C-H, yes. Uh, yes, this is the one. And uh, uh, prayer, oh, actually it's prayer, the mightiest force on earth. Okay. Because there's another one by Tom, not the right one. It's prayer, the mightiest force on earth by Frank Lobotch. And uh, I don't know whether we have digital form in this, uh, Colin. Uh, it's a good book. It talks about the power of thoughts. And it's the only book on prayer that I know they talk about thought projection. I, I read many books on prayer. None of them covered that. Only this guy did. Yeah. Frank Lobach. I don't know how to pronounce his name properly, but that's his name. And uh, let's see. Any question? Yes. Uh, so have a read of this book. And it, it encourages you on the power of thought. And he is the one book that says that he looked at the earth this way, and I like a fresh revelation like his, and it's written long ago. He says, the whole earth got this energy of thoughts of every human being thinking. Then if there are more good thoughts than bad thoughts, the whole society is good. If more bad thoughts than, than good thoughts, the whole society feels a negative side. Of course, he didn't cover the area that those who are in the law are protected from all this ill effect. But is a good illustration. Another question there by Arno. In Genesis, God created light and separated light from darkness. Uh, but there was no sun, no moon created uh, appearance. Yes, he's not talking about uh, sunlight. Uh, because sunlight and starlight are the same. Because suns and stars are the same. Say so how close you are. He's talking about the light of life. And so it's a different light altogether. It's not a light produced by uh, fusion, nuclear fusion. It's a light produced by God himself, the life that flows. God is like the sun. And Jesus, the Lamb of God, will be brighter in New Jerusalem 
than all the stars uh, which are bigger than our sun. Uh, notice in Revelation 22, the light of the Lamb of God fills the whole universe in new heaven, new earth. Okay. Well, I answer all questions. Praise the Lord. Uh, Colin, you have any last words or final words? Mm. Yeah, I think today is quite long already. So, uh, I have a question, but it might mm, take a bit of time or maybe <laughs> we have to answer it in subsequent uh, sessions. When, when the word of God comes into our mind, um, now that we see that this chart uh, with all the different uh, kind of uh, facets or sides to it, uh, do we go in a sequential way? Uh, like, you know, how Peter says that, you know, add to your faith, you know, next, next, uh, just by sequence? Or does the word of God first enter in one part, but then after that, can um, every part needs to grow and become a whole. So um, does the growth uh, go from one to another, one adding to the another, or uh, every part can grow, but maybe you know one, one go to level one, one go to level three, and in the end, everyone needs to go to the same maximum level. Okay. Good question. Now, let me illustrate with Hebrews 8 and Hebrews 10. That's how it works. Uh, God writes and God plants. So first in the mind, then in the heart. But both sides need writing. So look at the word heart as the source of the thoughts and the word mind as the consciousness of the thoughts. And so God would, in Romans 8, put the consciousness of the thoughts in the mind, and then he is writing in the heart still. That means still working. Then in, Rome, uh, in Hebrews 10, he would also put the consciousness or the the source of the thoughts in a heart, and then he's writing it in a mind. So put is stronger than write. Write is a process, put is instant. And uh, remember the diagram we have today is not thought itself. It's not thought itself. It's the source of the thoughts. So there's something deeper than the thought. I always use this play word called the thought before the thought. But it's the source of the thoughts. And this source of the thoughts, uh, I saw it like, like, for example, I saw it like, uh, like, like water flowing. And then as water flow, water picks up whatever is in the environment. So in some places, the river gets polluted, even though it starts very fresh and green and clean from the snow or from underground uh, reservoirs, uh, the fountain comes out very pure, very clean. But as it progresses, it picks up all the things. And so the same way, the source of all thoughts is life, the spirit of life that flows. But all the workings of the other seven spirits have to formulate those source of those thoughts before it becomes conscious thought. Before, remember, they are Two forms of thought, subconscious thoughts and conscious thoughts. Subconscious thoughts are what is influencing people without them realizing. It is causing a whole group of thoughts. One subconscious thought can produce a whole plethora of thoughts. For example, the sense of hate against a person. Uh, a lot of people uh, today hate people. So then everything they read, everything they see, every data they have is only through the narrow vision of that. And they were justified because, and that thing cannot be cured. Remember Romans 8. The, the, it says that uh, the carnal mind 
uh, cannot be renewed. He's an enmity against God. He's the enemy of God. It needs to be chopped off, broken in pieces, and a new renewed mind form. And so it's just like the mind needs renovation. The thought pattern needs renovation. It's formed into certain patterns. And it must be broken down before a new pattern of thoughts comes. And so uh, the process you're talking about, the key is given in uh, Hebrews 8 and Hebrews 10. By understanding these two, there is subconscious thoughts and conscious thoughts, the heart and the mind. And both need to be worked at for complete renewal. And uh, today's presentation is only all on the subconscious. We think we're conscious, but it's all in the subconscious. It should be deal at the subconscious level. Which is why I saw the plastic tree and I saw the plastic tree like producing like, you know, like a squid. All the black smoke comes and it's like trying to, trying to spread it in this mood, causing people to feel the sense of impatience and uh, the wave of thoughts that is there. And if every day you're waking up with the thought, uh, when will this happen? Why so long will this happen? It's not your thoughts. It's not your thoughts cunningly came from the plastic tree, causing you think. Then when you break those thoughts, different, every day you wake up. Wow, so exciting to serve God. So exciting. And, and because Jesus never had any doubts, you think the thoughts of Jesus, you think, wow, within the next five years, 10 years, the whole world is going to change for good. The kingdom of God is going to demonstrate. So your thoughts are different patterns altogether. It's the pattern of thoughts that is important, not just the thoughts. But Pastor, on this earth is more complicated because uh, you have the thoughts from yourself, uh, thoughts from God, and then uh, you, the other people and the enemy also all generate a lot of noise. It's like, you know, the radio is like so many different frequencies all broadcasting everywhere. So, um, for... In heaven, all the noise is blocked out, is it? From uh, the earth. All, all the thoughts of creation uh, can only reach up to the second heaven. And Satan, before he was dealt with at the cross, he could touch a little bit on the second heaven, but couldn't go into the third. Mm -hmm. So for the Angels, do they hear all the other thoughts um, coming out from the earth? or They see like light. They, in the spiritual world, you can not, not just hear thoughts, you can see it. You can see the thoughts like light. Do they need to deflect it or uh, they can ignore it? Oh no, they can ignore it because um, the Holy Spirit and Jesus uh, did something to the uh, to the whole universe through his blood. Mm. So for us, do we reach a state where it's uh, easy to ignore everything that is outside? Let's say when we are grown um, to you know uh, perfection. Does all the sound, we can shut out all the sound from outside? Yes. Like, like today, when you talk about sound waves, you can actually cancel sound by having anti sound. And if the sound is this way and you could reflect it directly, it meets itself and it cancels out. Because sound waves is just molecules moving in the air. When you produce the same opposite energy, it cancels out. And you know becomes white noise, and um, in the in the spiritual world, thoughts are life. They are alive. They need to go somewhere, and the accumulation of those wrong thoughts have to result in something. It can only be cancelled by the blood of the lamb, and so uh, that is why uh, some people are are more and some angels are more shiny than others is the ability of their thought dimension. Even when they're not thinking the energy that comes from them. And so it's possible like um, 
uh, is a throwing, throwing uh, football at the sun. We know the sun will just eat it up. Uh, in the same way, uh, uh, the thoughts that are weaker get overcome by the stronger thoughts. And a lot of the dark thoughts and the wrong thoughts, actually, they are eaten up by the good thoughts. They just swallow up, they disappear. It's like, it's like when the light shines, it just disperses. They are not as strong as the enemy presents itself. That's why Paul says we are able to put every thought to Christ, to be obedient to Christ. And um, it's a wonderful place to be in. Uh, like I could just meditate without any other thoughts except God's thoughts. I don't even struggle. And I have been having that for a long time already. Except that uh, when I finish my meditation, then I go about my daily thing, then I allow my other thoughts to feel. Then I say, oh, there's this constant thought in the area. I say, where is this source? And it's there I realize that. And then I begin to tap on a different source. In fact, thoughts are produced automatically through life. When life flows, thoughts flow. Without life, there's no thoughts. And negative thoughts and bad thoughts and dark thoughts are just the reverse gear. Uh, the energy is turned inwards like a black hole. Uh, it's turned inwards so the light cannot come out. And um, um, they, uh, they are weaker. Thoughts have different strength. And the source of all thoughts uh, is God. The source of all life is God. When we tap on the mind of Christ, it is like a nuclear fusion bomb that obliterates even all molecules around. So having the mind of Christ is like having nuclear fusion light of a greater than that, that you throw anything at it, just eats up. These powerful thoughts of God eats up every other energy thoughts and it cannot go in. In fact, it keeps coming out. And the strange thing is the enemy can feel our thoughts and it's painful for him when our thoughts are strong. That's why angels don't like to hang around people with pure heart and pure thoughts. Mm. Okay, so the, the enemy, his thoughts or the thoughts of the people in this world are affecting uh, the church, but the well, church... We but the church is also affecting the, the uh, pushing back onto the, the world. So when we gather together, we pray, we read the word, we study the word. Um, this is thoughts that are also in a way transmitting and wiping out uh, and cancelling out the, the, the dark thoughts, the bad thoughts in the world, in the society. So more Christians in the, in the country, in the society, uh, are praying and spiritual. Yes. We, will we will change the course of the society and the, the, the direction that uh, people are, are, are taking. Yes. And only Frank Lobosch speak about this and introduce this concept. He just introduced it. He didn't go further. So... Uh, but what we are talking now, his is the introduction to this power of thoughts changing the world. So where two agree on earth with strong thoughts, you can change anything. Mm. When you agree in heart, in mind, in words, heaven seals it. Mm. Mm. I think there's a lot to expound on here. Very interesting. Uh, yes. Remember this, Paul call it spiritual warfare. And what you bow in heaven will be bound on earth. So when, when, you, when we pray together, we are actually bringing God's kingdom from heaven down to, to be affecting yes. the earth. Yes. And this is the warfare Paul talked about. Actually, the warfare is in thoughts and in words. The actions are consequences of thoughts and intents of the heart. But the future is now being built in our thoughts. So one day we have radio, TV, we keep broadcasting. 
the word of God, they begin to see the kingdom of God manifest in those countries. Mm. Amen. Amen. Uh, good summary there, Colleen. Thank you. Yeah. Praise God. And I encourage all of you to try to catch these concepts. I know many of you thought you fully understand it. No. I know it takes a while to digest this. And, uh, but Frank Lobot's book will give you a glimpse of what's happening on the earth from thought. Remove all the physical from the earth. Okay, In your mind, remove all the physical from the earth. And imagine that the physical is just like air. Nothing can blow away. But the real solid thing is thought energy flowing. So the world is a mixture of thought energy flowing. Wherever the thought energy is the greatest, and the good thing is Christ has cemented his seal by the death on the cross and his resurrection and his proclamation of his word. Remember, his, the most precious thing he held was the word of the Father. And he says to his disciples in John 17, they have received my word, which is the thought that the disciples have been, a, a seed has been sown into human race. That seed is growing in the church. And that seed of thoughts is going to burst out and produce the kingdom of God. So the whole planet, like Paul says in 2 Corinthians 10, is the warfare or energy. But many Christians are weak. Their thoughts are weak. Once in a while, it gets strong when they get into prayer and they gather together. But generally, as we understand, because thoughts are nuclear fusion, a nuclear power, fission and fusion, all the battle that people fight against the enemy has been like TNT, gunpowder, and all these things they're using. But when you fight the battle at the top level, it is nuclear energy fighting, nuclear war. We are declaring nuclear war against Satan. He has been using nuclear war all the time. He's been using nuclear radiation, slowly changing and poisoning people's thoughts in the whole planet. And Jesus dropped the biggest nuclear bomb ever that exploded from the cross and is affecting people's heart, thoughts, mind, theology, understanding, belief system, philosophies. And as more and more grabs the truth, the truth begins to come to our thoughts. And as the truth comes into our heart and our mind, and we focus on that, and every day we understand the application of the truth for each situation, it explodes. And that's the kingdom of God. Praise the Lord. That's a good illustration. But uh, that's why today, if we have more people have the mind of Christ, it will impact uh, Satan. And good is more powerful than evil. If you have two persons with the, with the mind of Christ, you can change the planet. Well, one person can, but two begin to accelerate. And as more and more begin to think the thoughts of Christ and agree and believe the same thing. Already all of you generally are here because you believe the end time move. A reader that's producing energy. And as I say, the, the impact is in ratio is very great. Satan might need a, a person in high society, person having power, all that, who have his thoughts to change this world. Uh, he has to take energy to put them up there. And, uh, but because dark energy is lesser than God's energy, when we have one or two without any position, if we believe it, we can shake this whole planet Earth. And this planet Earth is shaking because of this end time move. And one day it's a physical shake that will be there in 2029. Uh, all because of the word that God has sown into our lives. So let's give thanks to the Lord. 
And uh, Elisa is saying, my worship is so strong because I thought I get. Yes, that's why worship songs are important. Worship songs are the reputation of words and thoughts. When the words are from God and people sing it, it releases energy. So some energy is released when people confess in line with the word. Then energy is released even greater when they think the thoughts of God. And look at the word thoughts in the Bible. You realize God says, my thoughts are not your thoughts because his thoughts are always higher than man's thoughts. And he couldn't find a man or woman to put his full thoughts there until Jesus came. And just one person with all the thoughts of God. How is Jesus one with the Father? All his thoughts. He can do so many things. He can break the laws of physics. He can walk on water. He can transport himself. So it is how, as we believe the things of God, we will transport ourselves. We will uh, bring healing to the sick, do signs and wonders, because it is when our belief system is out there and the thought energy and the source of the thought energy need to be a certain level when you begin to see the physical world uh, yield to the power of the energy God released in his word. The word has to be, in, the word is not just uh, black letters on white paper. The word has to be in our heart. The word has to be in our mind. The word has to be an energy force. And that energy can change this planet Earth. That is the kingdom of God. The gospel of the kingdom. Praise God. Father, we just thank you for your grace and mercy. Establish your word. Establish all that you do in each one of our life. Let your word and your power go forth. And let the word that is sown into us by the Father bear much fruit. Changing our heart and mind. Here we are 2,000 years after Jesus came and, and went. And he's seated on the throne of God. Yet your word has multiplied. The best-selling book in the whole world is still the Bible. There are people who still hold on to the Bible, hold on to the preciousness of their word, except your Bible must become our flesh and our blood. The word must become flesh and blood so that it can change this planet. Just as Jesus was a word make flesh, we become the word make flesh. And we change this planet. And that is your kingdom. Thank you, Father. Jesus' name. Amen.